inadequate to dealing with the scope of the problem. And, and the scope of the problem is, is, uh, is a little bit tricky. Uh, I'll give you a little, my food inside will be the broader one. Because we have this mantra uh, from corporate ag in this country that uh, somehow we've decided that it's our burden or it's a good thing for us to feed the world, or that uh, California uh, needs to produce as much as possible and export as much as possible dominating uh, other markets, other states, sending almonds to China, 80% of which, 80% of the almonds grown are exported overseas as if this is somehow a sign of our economic progress and we're benefiting, our economy is benefiting from this and as if the Central Valley's economy is benefiting from this. Now let's have a little bit of a reality check. The Central Valley has some of the most, uh, worst poverty in the United States not only do they have some of the worst poverty, they have some of the highest hunger rates in the middle of the most productive agricultural region in the world. Don't forget their water quality is crappy. Their water quality is crappy too. <laughs> the water that, uh, that, the, the, that we're irrigating the farms but the, good news our is, the good news is, is they're losing their water because the overpumping of groundwater is drying up all the... So we're going to see a water. crappy water. Mm -hmm. We're going to no. see a desertification of the Central Valley if, if things continue. As they would, yeah, absolutely. Want us not to. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely, and so uh, those of us who want to see, who would, who would prefer to see our ag land, because that's great soil, our ag land used to feed Californians and have a healthy food system for Californians, and not just Californians, we probably grow enough for the region too, no problem there. We're at risk of losing that, and that's also true of the Salinas Valley. Same problem there. We have massive groundwater overpumping, vastly underestimated. We have a huge strawberry boom, uh, e exporting uh, like crazy all over the country. So when we talk about the drought, you look at okay, our tap water supply. That, that's one way of looking at it, and it's an important way of looking at it. But we also need to look at this in a more holistic way. And ag is the elephant in the room, and we have to fundamentally shift our goals and, and the way we produce here in the state. But, but let's bring it back to San Francisco. So Jennifer, you know that we are self-contained here in San Francisco, but aren't we only self-contained because we got to Hetch Hetchy first and we're we damned it? We're not self-contained. We are whole, we are, we're very dependent on diverting water from the Delta. And that's what you have to understand. Is San Francisco is not like special. We're helping to deprive water from fish of from water from fish as well. Well, we're special because we have senior water rights. Well, we have well, yeah, senior so water rights, but they're this. junior to the two uh, to the two irrigation districts. That sure. Are but, but that said, relatively to most of California, San Francisco got there first. We have this pristine water, and when you talk to our politicians, they'll be damned, or they'll continue the dams if uh, they're you know if if anybody wants to take away our water. Aren't we just like Westland's water district and all those other Central Valley water districts that say, hey, not our problem, you came later, you suffer? In some sense, yeah, the senior water, the, the, the assignment of water rights by time rather than by use and need is one of the problems with water rights assignments. I would say that San Francisco takes more responsibility than Westland's. They give the Park Service I think about $30 million a year for Just a watershed. Just like Taliban versus ISIS, right? Well, I hope not. I hope not. So they, get, they, they pay about $30 million a year to the Park Service to help manage the watershed. They are, they have a, they, one of the things they did when they were reforming was create a national resource division. So they're actually managing all the, all the acres they own to, to support water, the watershed function, which is hugely important. And, um, you know, San Francisco is the largest landowner in San Mateo County and the second largest in Alameda County. So that's very, so you can think about Hetch Hetchy, but you should also think about what they do. But I, so yes, I think San Francisco needs to come to reality, reality. I think one of the things moving forward as we reform water rights, as climate change moves forward, is that San Francisco is going to be able to get much less water from the Tuolumne River. You know, there was a big argument 10 years ago about them wanting to take more water from the Tuolumne River. A lot of environmental groups fought that and they agreed not to increase their take. But really, I think that one thing we're going to see from climate change, as you've seen with Australia's drought, is a dramatic reduction 
and the water we get to divert from the well. So I'm very interested in Barry's take on San Francisco vis-a-vis -vis the health of the bay. You know, it, it, it's, you know, what I'd like to link that to is something that Jennifer said a little while ago about, about proposal building dams. And she's absolutely right. The, the, there's the problem with the, the, there are a number of proposals for new dams in California. The problem is there's just no water left to capture. We have um, statewide, the state regulates uh, dams in California. If you have a dam over a certain size or capacity, the state regulates you to make sure that you're not causing um, uh, threats to public safety if you're not maintaining your dam. The state regulates uh, over 1,200 dams in California. Um, um, we have a lot of dams. So when you build the 1,201st and the 1,202nd, you, you don't get as much water out of that as when you build the first and the second. Um, so the amount of water we squeeze out of our rivers with new dams is tiny. And the amount of water we would squeeze out of our rivers during droughts is nothing. Because our rivers are running dry during our droughts. So, so in order to meet our water needs over the long term, we need a new plan. The old plan for 100 years was pretty simple. It was when the city's growing, find a new river, build a dam, build a pipe just a little bit farther to that next, next river. And that just doesn't work. Um, uh, and an example about that, uh, about that um, um, the, the city of Las Vegas, Las Vegas' water manager, who's a really recently retired, but a really prominent, um, 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 controversial figure, um, said that her city needed to go to the next river in order to get more water. The next river for Las Vegas is the Mississippi River. <laughs> That's not a joke. Because every river between Las Vegas and the Mississippi River is out of water. Every river is maxed out between Las Vegas and the Mississippi. Same is true for us. Our rivers are pretty much tapped out. We'll occasionally get a big gully washer um, uh, because of El Nino. It will happen occasionally. We might build some little surface storage facilities, but really, what, the reason we're not building those facilities is because they just don't pencil out anymore. Agriculture is pushing for those traditional big dams, and they'll only work you guys are generous enough to pay for them. Um, um, they, they can't, won't even conceivably pay for them themselves. So, in, a, in, a, in contrast with the tiny amount of water you can squeeze out of your dams, um, how much water do we dump into the ocean every year? California dumps into the ocean treated wastewater about 4 million uh, acre feet a year. That's six times what Los Angeles uses. The state's target for recycling water is 2 million acre feet by 2030, and we have a long way to go. But that means that that, that 4 million acre feet has <coughs> more water than the, two, the, the combined flows of the Tuolumne River, the Merced River, and the Stanislaus River. The, the biggest river in Southern California is the city of Los Angeles' waste outfall in the Santa Monica Bay. So the, we used to look at New dams, new at, at dam in new rivers is the way you meet the needs of a growing state. And that's over. Um, the, 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 which is why there isn't a city left in California that is proposing to build one of these big dams. They're just not on the priority list for cities in California. They are for agriculture. Um, but what we're going to be focusing on is waste of recycling, more water use efficiency. We're going to keep pushing that. Capturing urban stormwater, great water recycling, better groundwater management, that's the future.